Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Pickle Jar. This is Jill, and we have Rachel back here from the UK. And Rachel is going to share with us a little bit more about her daughter Molly's story with us today. Um, hopefully, you have listened to Molly's diagnosis. Now, Molly um, was diagnosed with secondary adrenal insufficiency um, and hyperpituitarism at the age of 14. Um, and it was a long struggle to get her to that diagnosis. It was her entire life, she was ill and her mom was her biggest advocate. And unfortunately, in July of uh, 2022, Molly passed away. And her mom here is sharing with us, you know, I can't even imagine the grief and, you know, the hurt that she carries in her heart. Um, but she is determined to continue on her advocacy and her awareness of adrenal insufficiency um, in hopes that nobody ever has to to deal with this um, as what she and her family are living with right now. So um, Rachel, thank you so much again for joining us here in the pickle jar and sharing Molly with us. I truly, truly, you have no idea how, how much gratitude I have in my heart for you and for Molly. So thank you. Um, so let's Rachel, let's start. Um, we ended the first episode when Molly was diagnosed at 14. Now something I really took from that episode, I remember you saying in that episode, you were told she has secondary adrenal insufficiency, um, the seriousness of this condition, you were told about adrenal crisis, you were told about injection kits, you were instructed that, you know, if she goes into crisis, you know, you might have as little as 30 minutes to save your daughter's life. Um, but from that, you felt you knew instantly that you weren't giving really the tools that you needed to manage this illness safely and felt confident enough that, you know, possibly you could do that. It was kind of, you know, kind of pushed to the side in comparison to the seriousness of it and all the other things that you were dealing with Molly at the time. Um, now tell us once she was diagnosed, um, what happened in the months after that? So how, how did you, what led you to this strong determination to, to do your campaigns and to build awareness and all the things that you have done in the last, you know, decade to um, advocate for people with adrenal insufficiency? Um, well, mom was diagnosed, like you said, when she was 14, um, after a very long time of us not knowing what was wrong with her. Um, she was very poorly by this point. Um, and I was shocked to learn what was actually wrong with her. I, I just couldn't believe it. And my entire world fell apart at that moment when I realised the seriousness of it. And I kind of went into a hole, really. And I just, I couldn't really speak to anyone. Everyone else's problems were ridiculous compared to mine. I mean, I just was I was kind of terrified that I was going to lose her because it the the seriousness of what she had it just blew my mind right. I mean it's it's crazy it's 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 dangerous and it's frightening um and I would so, think it probably scared her that you could have lost her before she was 14 because of the misdiagnosis yeah. in the past just just to know how how sick your 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 girl was for so long must have broke yeah, you yeah, knew yeah. but it would have broke your heart I would think even more to know to know that what she was struggling with I mean we did we did kind of um think a lot about that there were a lot of occasions where we could have lost her every time she was poorly I mean she just used to get so poorly and go into what we now know was a kind of coma really she would sleep for six hours her temperature would be 40 degrees she'd be so poorly um it was absolutely hideous and how she got through those times I don't I just don't know so when she was diagnosed it's really weird because there was a relief there because I was relieved to, to oh. know that now if something did happen to her I would know how to treat it. I would, I, I'd know what was going on. Yeah. But also there was an absolute terror there for me because I realised she was living on a cliff edge and really she still was living on a cliff edge. 
Um, it was it was just it was hideous. Um, so I got quite depressed about it, and I, I people would just be talking to me about their silly problems of you know, everyday things. And I'd be thinking, oh, just shut up. I just can't deal with this. My child is like, no one really sort of understood. And it, it was just so weird. And then it went on for, it went on for quite a long time. And then a friend of mine, Vicky came round and I'd known Vicky for a long time. Um, and she had Addison's disease. Okay. And she only lives up the road from me. So, she came round to talk to me about what it actually was. I had no real idea what adrenal insufficiency was. I had no idea. Mm. And she said, well, Addison's disease is adrenal insufficiency. It's just a different, a different disease, which is causing the problem. So Addison's is caused by your adrenal glands not functioning. Now Molly's adrenal efficiency was caused by her pituitary gland not giving the signals to her adrenal glands to function. So in both cases, and in all cases of whatever causes your adrenal insufficiency, adrenal insufficiency is the same thing. It's the yeah. same treatment. It's yeah. the same. If, if you know, if you go into crisis, it's the same treatment, everything. And so I kind of learned a little bit more about it. And then I said to her, well, what do you do? Do you carry this contraption around? And I showed her the injection. She's like, yeah. And I was like, why on earth is there not an EpiPen? Why isn't there a quick pen? I can't, I can't believe this. I couldn't get it in my head. I just was, it was ridiculous to me. Um, and so that started bubbling up in my mind and I started getting more and more angry about it. And then I thought, right, th this is just stupid. No, this can't go on. It's, it's just, I was propelled into a really underground, weird world where things like this were just seen as being acceptable. And I kind of thought, what, how is this acceptable? You know, I just, I don't understand. I just couldn't get my head around it at all. So um, I contacted my uh, local editor of the paper and uh, said, right, this is what's been happening because I, I mean, I've, I'd been doing, I've had connections with, with the paper and all things before from free work and whatever. And um, so I said, I've started a campaign and I started a EpiPen, a petition to get signatures to take to the government to get um, an EpiPen made. And so she said, right, okay, well, we'll run a story on it. And I said, right, okay. Um, and she said, but we'll need Molly's picture. I was like, I don't want Molly's picture in the paper. And I was so protected over her. So I don't want to involve Molly. I don't want a picture in the paper. I don't really want her to have anything to do with this. And, and she was like, sadly, she, this is the only way you will get, you know, people interested in your story, if, if you could show pictures, etc. So anyway, that was the first thing that happened with the um, campaign. Um, and then I started up the page on Facebook, the awareness page. Mm -hmm. um, and so currently, I think the petition has probably got 20,000 signatures or wow. more now, maybe maybe even 30, because there, there are paper petitions as well. And there are, there's also an overseas peti petition also. Um, but there, I mean, this has been going on for obviously 10 years now or more. Um, and so, yeah, I thought... I've got to fight for her because like, who else is going to? This is like a really, really odd, strange position to be in. Um, but you're you're so, right. Like I, I can understand. Like you're, I find a lot with having adrenal insufficiency. There's so many things that, like you said, like it just seems to make common sense. We should have an epipen. <laughs> yeah, you, I, 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 with, you you only have a few minutes left you know, Molly might've had to do it on her own. I might have to do it on my own. And if we mm. need to, and if we're in that serious of a situation, it's going to be very challenging for us with a syringe and a vial yeah. and load mm. and minister. Mm. And, but it is, it's just, we have so many of those moments with this illness where you're just kind of like, it's mind blowing mm. to be like, yeah. I don't understand. So, um, so, so you started the awareness page. So what kind of response did you get from the paper, from the article once it was run? Um, 
I think it got picked up as well by other papers. This is obviously back in 2013. Yep. So it was in a few different papers and it reached, um, I think it, it reached Northern Ireland somehow. I don't know how. But I I um, started up the page also at that time. So I was linking the petition to the page and vice versa. So very quickly, it started gaining a lot of um, Moment, a lot of numbers. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then a, a, a guy contacted me called Jamie, who's a doctor. His daughter's got the same thing as Molly. Well, she's got okay. adrenal insufficiency, but it's a different cause, but it's the same. Um, and... I kind of thought well, he'd be really good to have on board here like being a doctor he knows what he's talking about um and he was really interested in helping me so we kind of sort of like teamed up together and then there was Vicky with her Addisons and she's also uh, one of the um along with Pete she's one of the um Addisons UK on Facebook's um admin so they run the Addisons UK Facebook okay. um organization um so she was another good good person to have on my team then um not long after that parents started contacting me so I had a lot of um a lot of contacts with different parents um basically just telling me horror stories of the way that their lives had been going since their children had been diagnosed or um you know just just general things really like uh, schools for instance um without an EpiPen schools won't give the injection so I had a big argument with Molly's school um they were the head was absolutely awful I'd explained I'd explained the whole situation to the school and they were happy for me to go in and train them to do the injection so I went in and I spoke to the head of year and Molly's form tutor and they were absolutely brilliant they were so good about it um I didn't have a problem with it at all whatsoever so I thought thank goodness for that that's really good because otherwise this would be an absolute nightmare I was still feeling very very down at that point because she'd only just been diagnosed and, and it was all so massive in my head um so anyway I I got home and then that evening someone from the school rang it wasn't even the head teacher I never even spoke to the head teacher in the whole time that Molly was there because she didn't even address the situation with me at all whatsoever um and whoever it was phoned me said um oh I'm sorry but um Mrs so-and-so says we can't do the um the injection the emergency injection we can't do it we're not insured to do it we won't do it we're not doing it we need to be trained and I'm like right okay um but you know I've just had a meeting everyone was happy but no no it was not gonna happen so I said right well I can't send Molly into school knowing that you right. won't give her an emergency injection if she needs it right so what am I supposed to do I said responsibly as a mum I cannot send my child into school if she's not going to be looked after in that situation I said that situation is very very unlikely but if it was to occur what are you going to do are you just going to stand there and watch her go you know is that what you're going to do because that's what would happen um anyway uh I phoned Molly's endocrinologist uh, and we had a chat and the nurse was really good actually and she said right I'll go to school and I'll train the teachers okay. So in the end, Molly had a week or two off of school. Then um, she went in and trained the teachers. And then so I think most of the teachers were trained on how to do the injection. But I've had so many, so, so many letters, um, emails, phone calls from parents that their endocrinology nurses won't go and train the school. And so they're left in that situation that I was in for one or two weeks. And it's hideous because of the lack of pen, really. Um, so this just goes on and on and on. Um, parents are all over the country, all over the world, just taking their children to school yeah. in utter dread that something might happen because the school won't administer the emergency injection. Um, which is like 
really not giving a child an asthma inhaler if they were having an asthma attack or yeah. not giving yeah. a child um, an injection if they were to have an anaphylactic shock. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It, it, it would be like withholding those things from that child. Um, so it just became more and more important to get this done. Um, I started, um, I, I had, I, I wrote up um, a, a letter to schools to heads of schools okay. and school, like just just a template letter that parents could take into schools to to just explain the situation um say that there was a uh, you know there was an answer to it um they can be trained to do this and also another thing is um Jamie he put me in touch with someone called Alan um, Jamie and myself have both had an, an, a meeting with him and he was um, a specialist in quick pens so okay. he made quick pens and he came on board on our team and he was really happy to say that he could develop this pen he was a maker of these quick pens um, he had a factory he was you know he was ready to help make these quick epi pens okay. so he was there too and, and he gave me a lot of information also um, and he told me that if you look at all of the the rules of the um, medical boards in this country, and probably most all the countries, it, it does state that legally, if that drug is a life-saving drug, anyone can legally give it. So I got the connections and the web, the website, um, all the links and everything straight to this letter, which okay. states that hydrocortisone is a life-saving drug. Anybody is legally allowed to give it and you know, uh, and with think, no, no comebacks. And I think that's an important part for um, point for people to really kind of, you know, we need to have documentation to prove what we're saying. They need medical yeah. sound advice to prove that, you know, kind of, because it's a, probably a new situation for everybody. And the more concrete yeah. that you have, the better. Now, do you remember time frame from like, what you're sharing with us now, um, the time frame from when Molly was diagnosed, diagnosed, how much time had passed? Um, to this, 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 this all happened really quickly with oh, the well, EpiPen. That's good. Um, it, it was actually in 2013, 2014, maybe just into 2014 when, um, when Alan contacted me and said, look, I'm happy if, if you find a he said to me, if you find a pharmaceutical company willing to do this, then I will help make this thing happen. So, right, okay. So then I then spent six years trying to contact one of the pharmaceutical companies. Well, I did contact a few, but I spent six years contacting this one pharmaceutical company that did kind of specialise in the endocrine sort of medication. And... Um, I just got nowhere, absolutely nowhere. And I needed this for right. it to happen. So in the end, after about six years, I thought, right, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna write an open letter. So I wrote an open letter on the internet to the CEO of this company. And um a friend of mine came back on Twitter, it was, and said, Someone's contacted me and they know who you want to get told of. You this oh. is who like okay, right. So <laughs> I've never told anyone who it was. But um, so I then had the private email of this CEO of this company. And um, he was he was new, actually. And um, so he he was kind of horrified by the whole situation. Um, and we set up a meeting down in London. And uh, we I took Jamie, Vicky, we went down on the train. Um, went to a great big board meeting in London, all sat with all of the the, the company of the pharmaceutical company, all the managers, all the people. And um, Jamie did a presentation. Um, I'd managed to get, um, I took down printouts of, I don't know how many petition signatures and reasons for signing. 
I also took down about a hundred handwritten letters from patients and parents um, in support of the pen. Um, and we sat around this table just talking it out really. And they agreed that it was something that they could do and they agreed that, that they would do it as well. Um, so that's how far we got. I think we, I think the meeting went on for a couple of hours. I mean, it was, you know, it was pretty good. Um, everything there. I mean, Jamie had all of the uh, medical evidence. I had all of the, um, the letters from patients and parents and different things like that. I mean, some of them are horrific, you know. Um, so, you know, we made a really, really good case for it. Right. And they did agree that it would happen. So that that was that so that was kind of all going on in the background um now, in the meantime i would say could i ask i think from what i understand there's a couple hurdles with us having an epipen one is um it's got to be set up differently because the medication can't be mixed because it expires um it only is good for so long of a period correct and then and then not the there's not a one solution. The, the the one that comes in a vial is liquid and that can last 18 months. Oh, okay. So, so, so yeah. I know here in Canada, we have to mix our solution. We have a powder. Mm -hmm. Is that what you have as well? No, I didn't have okay. powder. Some people do okay. have the powder. Yeah, we have the powder. Water, okay. We so have I... the, um, a vial with, with the liquid oh, in. Okay. okay. Which is oh. what this is being based on. And it was okay. also that our... Um, our guy, he specialized in intramuscular injections also, okay. which is okay. a different thing. Which so, you, so, so he could create one then with a solution that could last a year and a half before it expires. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So from what I understand here in Canada, um, yeah, our solution, once it's mixed, once I mix it, it's only good for three days. And that would be a challenge here. Um, mm -hmm. And then everything, everything always comes down to money. <laughs> Right. So yeah. find yeah. man yeah. too, right? You have a rare illness. There's a lot of money that's got to be invested yeah. into these things. And then are they going to get back a return off of it as well? Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is exactly why this medication has never been developed because it is so rare. They won't make any money on it. Yeah. Like nobody will make any money on this, on this um medication. Although it's becoming less rare um now but it is still a rare condition. So it's hard for anyone to make anything on any anything, whether they're making cortisol checkers or right. pumps or- you And you know, know what, and I think that's why it's, and I appreciate your time so much and everyone who's been on the podcast and, and anything anyone does to advocate for adrenal insufficiency, because I think the potential's out there for these companies mm -hmm. to make money, but they just don't know it yet. And that's why it's important for us to get on social media and get these numbers up, like on your petition mm -hmm. and stuff like that mm -hmm. on my YouTube channel to say, you know what, you know, we got all these subscribers. It's all these people that want to make change. They want to use that, that technology. If you develop, here's your market, here's your people, here's your adrenal insufficiency. I think, I think you're right. I think it's becoming less rare. Mm -hmm. And um, if they know how many of us are really, really out there, um, yeah. there's a lot of potential for these companies. I also worked with um, Julia from Solution Medical. I don't know if you've heard Solution Medical. They are also developing a pen as well. And I've kind of said, because of when everything happened with Molly, I, I just found everything too much. And uh, Julia contacted me one day to ask, ask something or other and asked how my company would get in on what was going on with it and everything like that. And I'm I'm I just said, look, I've left it in their hands. Right. Um, and, you know, also with, with you guys as well. I mean, whoever does it first is, it's. Just do it, just do it, just get it done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that, that they, they're, they're doing really well in their, their mission to get it, it done too. So, and there's another few different projects going on also. So I think it will happen but it's just taken a long, long time. And the weirdness of it all is like the competition is is a little bit strange. 
I mean, like for any mum or patient, you'd just be thinking, I just want this done. Right. But there is a certain amount of competition that goes on with these things also, which is a bit ridiculous. It's, yeah. You know, um, as with the awareness thing, I mean, the whole the whole thing, I've had some really, really bad, bad experiences going with the awareness campaign, just contacting different, I mean, doctors and consultants, they're not really happy about someone coming into their world and thinking that it's well, crap because it is crap. They're not happy with that. They're not happy. So they put up their defenses. And and I had I I I mean I I will write it all down one day, but I had a really bad experience with one consultant. I mean it was terrible. <laughs> I, well and, and you know what and the reality is no matter what we go through in life you know we come across people you hope everyone's going to be kind and understanding and compassion and there's just not some nice people out in the world and you come across yeah. them and, and everything right mm-hmm. and that's probably what it was mm-hmm. probably just somebody who just wasn't a kind loving compassionate person and it was they yeah, should it be in that awful. role <laughs> it was awful and I mean, I was just coming from a place where I was scared of losing my child. Yeah. That is my, that was my main thing was that I'm trying to make things better. Can I do anything to help you guys make things better? I mean, I, I'm here to do whatever, um, you know, whatever it, it takes. Um, but no, there was just no. And, and, and you, you, you get that with a lot of professionals. They yeah. just think that you're a busybody. You don't know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. And the re- reality of it is that I was terrified I was going to lose my child. And and from speaking to other parents and stuff, they obviously are too and were too. And, and we have lost hundreds of patients since I started this 10 years it's, ago or more. Yes, We've lost hundreds. It's It's very heartbreaking how many we lose every year from something that you yeah. know not to put light on on it on the treatment but time is of the the essence and we need something in a timely manner to give us the opportunity yeah. to su- survive and we and that's one thing I really wanted to I really liked at the start you said you know Molly was you know on a on a cliff edge and to remind mm. that we all need to be reminded that we're on that edge every day yeah. And that's why we need yeah. this technology, because no matter how well mm. we feel, something mm. could change in a heartbeat for us. And and we're we're just on the edge. Yeah. I mean, some of the letters that I've received and I have published them all because they were for publication. I asked people to send me letters, open letters that I could take to the pharmaceutical company just to put our case forward. Right. Uh, I thought they were going to be published. Everyone was happy for them to be published because they are because they need this out there, too. And one of them was one one was quite shocking. It was um, a, a lady in the train station with her two year old, no, three year old who had adrenal insufficiency. She had a baby in her arm and the, the little one was running along, fell over, broke her arm. I think it, she broke her arm. She was on her own. She had a baby in the other arm and she had to somehow get this toddler injected with the contraption that we have on a platform with no one around and a, and a, a small baby I mean like it that was a situation that I thought that is just hideous that and it, we that... never think that we're going to be in these situations and we always say like when when I went to school or when I spoke to any of Molly's teachers you know that it's very unlikely that anything like this is going to happen but yeah. they don't they do happen these things do happen and you do have to be prepared and that's um, another thing that just mind blows me with all these people I've been lucky enough to talk to with adrenal insufficiency you know you were lucky enough with molly that you were given an injection kit and told about it right away so many people are denied it still and you need to have it because like you just said rachel that it's you don't know when that situation is going to change and you need it so you need to be 
you need to be overprepared with this illness. And if your endocrinologist, your doctor is saying, no, you don't, you need to get the mm -hmm. proper documentation. You need to fight yeah. and advocate yeah. and start step one, get a kit, yeah. get yeah. multiple kits. I have them all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's so true and when uh, I mean I can I can have messages at 2 a.m in the morning I always answer them I'm all, yeah. I always try and help um and there was one lady who was beside herself because they wouldn't give her an injection kit for her child and I'm kind of like doing all the research and everything and then luckily I worked with the Pituitary Foundation as well at the very beginning that we st we set up like Adrenal Insufficiency Awareness Day on the 6th of June um, and they were kind of with me from the very beginning and the Pituitary Foundation have been brilliant and they um, they came up with a letter quite a few years ago um, which was a ref uh, uh, cortisol, hydrocortisone refusal letter so if you were to get um a paramedic out and they refused to do the injection you would have to say to them look can you sign this letter then that you've refused to give me my life-saving medication and it's it's a properly formatted letter Love it. from an organization and it's brilliant so i've splattered that all over my page so that's available the links to that are available okay and um, i will make sure all the links I'll make sure yeah. I'll turn the notes too, because I, you know what, I want to create something like that here in Canada. Cause I had someone on the podcast yeah. once who had the same idea, but you're right. We need a letter saying, you know what, I'm telling you this now, yeah. you probably have, you know, have your doctor sign it, whoever saying you need it. And if yeah. you don't give it to me now, it's on your, now it's your responsibility. Because some paramedics will not give it either right. that they won't give the injection. Um, it is, I mean, I wrote to all of the hospital trusts in the UK in probably about 2016, because there was um, a case where the East of England, um, I think it was a, something happened, they didn't give the injection, and a, a lad died, I think he was 17 or something like that. Um, so they updated their protocol. So I printed out their protocol and I sent a letter, I sent posters, I sent everything they could possibly need to every ambulance trust in the UK. Right. And they did send, I, I published all of the replies to the letters as well. So they're all there. The letters there, everything's there um, to update the protocol of, um, you know, people who have got adrenal crisis. Right. Um, so that, that's all happened. But I mean, the mistakes are still being made now. I mean, it is just, and every um, and when I started, what I wanted was, I wanted every patient to be diagnosed, to be given a pack, with a detailed description of what adrenal insufficiency is and what to do in a crisis. I wanted a, um, a medical bracelet included, just a rubber band with adrenal insufficient steroid dependent, um, maybe a car seat cover for a seat belt thing um and the epi pen obviously when it it was there all the injection pen in a pack with an individual guide to say this is the individual medical uh plan for this person right. so it's in one place and then also i designed a a flip out um thing for the car where the tax disc used to go in the little round thing um with it was just um an emergency you could take it out of the pack from inside the car and just look through it and see the medical needs of that person right. that was in the car right. that needed yeah. it um so all these things sh i mean they should be available to patients and they're they're not you have to source everything yourself i mean half these things don't exist you like you, you know um yeah yeah, so um, they should exist and they should be given to every patient. Um, but the thing with it, everything is it it doesn't seem to be taken seriously. No, I completely it's agree not with you. Taken seriously, they 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 say one thing but act the other way. Um, their actions mm. don't reflect the words that they tell us when they tell us mm. how serious this is. Mm. It's kind of like yeah, you know what? Here you go. It's really serious. 
it's life threatening and good luck. <laughs> mm. It's kind of how I feel, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So in the last, so after about six years, you made some really good progress on stuff. What happened in the last, you know, four years with? So what's kind of gone gone on in the last few years with the awareness and the advocacy and stuff that you you've been doing? Um. Well, I, I mean, I just, I just basically send. I, I, I've got so many different posters on my page, which can be shared through the internet, and it's, it's a really good way of doing it because visually, because I'm, I'm an artist, so like, I find visually people are more attracted to things. Yes. Than they are yeah. if it's just written down. Yeah. It's called human so, nature. Yep. I've got. I've got hundreds of posters on there that can okay. be shared on social media and okay. some some weeks they would be having 30,000 shares. I mean just one individual poster would be shared 30,000 times. Oh, yeah. And that was incredible. Yeah, and so I mean I screenshot these stats and I post them onto my page like to say thank you for sharing this. And some of the posters can be quite attractive looking but what they're saying is absolutely awful you know um which is it just catches people's eyes and you just you know that is it's a good way of getting well, it, these it, it draws everybody there. in and then they read the message right like you you we're, yeah. we're all human we all need to be visually or attracted to yeah. something for some reason and if you can do that you're in, you're going to engage them in the information that you want to share with them the best thing mm -hmm. i ever did with this podcast to make it more known is i changed my picture to me drinking out of a pickle jar because yeah. people were like, what is she doing? Right. Like, and it drove people. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have, you know, mm -hmm. I, I look because I have, I drink pickle juice because I have adrenal insufficiency and oh, look, yeah. there's a podcast yeah. about it. Right. So, yeah. so I mean, I've done, yeah, so many things, so many different things. It's like, I, I once invented the kidney brothers. <laughs> there was like a cartoon pair of kidneys with these adrenal glands on oh. the top. It were really rubbish. And <laughs> it was just a cartoon, you know, just to attract people to what was happening. Also, I did a, um, a layman's guide to the pituitary gland with just it with different um characters all around and you know exactly what happens but in a cartoon way which that went down quite well you know I mean just things like that well and I think there's most of the information that we have that's out there for adrenal insufficiency it's so medical it's so use the word dry and it's just not engaging mm. and we want to mm. educate and we want change we need things like that to bring awareness to make it mm. you know to engage people in it because if not it, yeah. it it's very everything's too technical and some people can't yeah. most of us mm. can't process stuff no. and we're no. over we're already overwhelmed by the medical yeah. community a lot of people have post-traumatic stress because of their misdiagnosis and the journey they've been yeah. on and they don't want to yeah. read the technical documents anymore but when they can look at something no. and say no. oh now, now it makes sense now i understand the problem i had was that I was kind of, like I said, propelled into this crazy world where everything was so scary. And weirdly, some of my closest friends just didn't really understand what I was doing with the page. Wouldn't really share anything. Um, and it seems like if you don't have that situation yourself, you kind of shut your eyes to it. Yeah. I mean, people don't mean to do that, but some people do do that. And so you get these blocks where you're sharing stuff and you find it's only being shared by people who are affected, affected by, yeah. by the same thing and not like normal people who have not got this thing. They don't really, you know, fully jump in and want to share and help with the situation um and, and, and i found that really weird yeah and it's just really most stuff it's just a click and share right like it's not i know and it's right. like you know i used to get so frustrated because i i would share something and it would be pretty potent it would be a real smack in the face sort of uh poster which is really serious saying some really serious stuff and it would be ignored 
And that used to upset me because I used to think, well, my child could die. My my child could die in 30 minutes. I'm really desperate here. No one really cares. Um, this is just crap. And so the organisation that I set up and everything, I mean, I've got some really good friends and I call them my family. I've got some amazing friends and I know so many wonderful people because of setting up that little organization I mean we would never have met other than you know me yeah, just yeah basically just having a big mouth and shouting and just <laughs> being so frustrated by the whole thing um but it is difficult for people to understand it is and I understand that um it's hard. It's hard for other people to understand. And what what was a nice thing was with uh, Molly's picnics, which was set up in like the first year that that it was all going. Um, so tell so us we did a little bit about, about her picnics because that was part of the awareness day, right? Yeah. So we we set up this awareness day on the sixth of June, and we had the first Molly's worldwide picnic, and just invited people worldwide to um have a picnic on the 6th of june just to raise awareness and that's that was a good thing because people did join in with that so i've had like lots of rave up picnics at mine you know <laughs> or in different places we once had one in in the on the local park we had a whole big fair thing going on um and and they've been really good and we've had so many picnics now that the maps, if you look at the picnic maps, it shows all the locations of where these picnics have been held and stuff like that. And I think we had about 250 worldwide picnics one year, which was just crazy, yeah. you know? But lovely because you see all the pictures of all the people and, the, you know, they have the, we have blue balloons and things like that and blue butterflies. And mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's a good thing to get people together just think about exactly yeah. and anything we can do to get people talking and start some type of a conversation um mm -hmm. in any situation it all builds on each other right it's all mm -hmm. we got we got to we got to build it somehow right and you've done a lot yeah. of the building for us a lot of the building um so what else um in terms of advocacy and things like that um in the last you know in that first decade after molly's diagnosis was there anything else that was going on um yeah just just the general everything really I mean everything I ever did I kind of linked it to that in That's some it. way I mean I've I've been the artist for our town for like 15 years now I do all of the um, country show posters and I'm involved in the country show and uh, we had about 7,000 visitors last year but um that I mean we had a whole big one which was with the Pratutri Foundation one year so it, with the blue butterflies and the posters and these posters right. they're, they're just spread all around the town you know um so that that was another thing that we did and this year the country show is actually in memory of Molly um so you know that's going to raise awareness again because like I said we do have about seven thousand odd visitors it's quite a big thing um and also the christmas tree festival in stroud in town um i always used to put a christmas tree in the tree for the awareness campaign right and i made baubles one year and i put hang them all on the tree and the tree was in memory of of, of rowdy one year one of the the boys that i know his his mum and his family um they lost him when he was 13 and this happened in 2016 um and it was so so sad absolutely awful but he he was such a beautiful boy and i know so many mums and dads and families that have lost their children and i you know, I used to do these picnics in memory of them. So they 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 would be included in the posters, you know. Um and and the same with the Christmas tree as well. That that one was all lit up in blue for Rowdy, you know. Um he he was over, I mean, they they were from 
the other side of America. You know, they're they're so far away from us, but I felt so close to them as a family because they, you know, had had lost him and it was what I was dreading happening every day of Molly's life. Yeah. Every day when I went into her room, I just would dread. I just, I was scared, you know, I was frightened to death all the time. And there's been so many picnics in memory of kids that have been lost and people that have been lost. Um, I've made videos and different things like that with them as, as well. Just, just keep them alive in 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 their memory you know that that shouldn't have happened to them because every single one of them has lost their life due to this disease which is it is manageable with the correct care the yeah. correct medication no it's you're like right. it's like having diabetes but it's a different hormone yeah and diabetes is, it's just also a scary condition. Um, Mole had diabetes also. But it, it, the, 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 the care and the knowledge and everything is there with that. Whereas with adrenal insufficiency, it's not there. No, exactly. We're, we're more at the start of the, the 20th century with diabetic care. As comparison to adrenal insufficiency, they're not making any progress. Yeah. They would never mm. tell, you know, a diabetic to live on low blood sugar and hope for the best, <laughs> which is kind I of know, weird, that... like they're saying to us, you know, live on low cortisol yeah. and let's hope nothing, yeah. you know, pushes you over that cliff because it might happen. And if you do, you have a very yeah. short period of time to correct yourself. And, yeah. um, but, but you're right. Everything that you, you fought for and laid a foundation for became your, your reality and everything that broke your heart and you honored, mm. but that's also mm. given you, you know the determination to how to continue on with your advocacy work yeah yeah I mean I I I kind of like for about a year um after we lost mole I just didn't have it in me really to even think about anything I mean it was awful I used to just sit on the sofa staring into space not knowing what to think not just I just didn't know how to live it was just awful awful I didn't go out I didn't it, it was just terrible and then kind of started thinking well I've got to start you know rebuilding our lives a little bit um and stop being so hopeless because I was just an, an, a mess but and you um, should have been a mess and you you have every right mm -hmm. to be a mess right like and you're going to be a mess over and over and over again right because yeah, it I, I, I really am yeah mm, right? I really because am still yeah and, um but but to move forward and to find days where you can do something you I know you know how it's going to keep like you said you use the words keep, keep these these people alive that we've lost and that's mm -hmm. the way we can do it was we all have to fight for change and mm -hmm. all, all the things that you've done have been absolutely incredible and you know we said earlier there is a lot of us and it's growing and you use the mm -hmm. word family like all these people that you know, we're probably never going to meet in person, but we do feel like we're all family because we have something so unique that connects us. And if we can yeah. all start, if we can all start opening and using our voices just a little bit, just start a little bit, yeah. sharing exactly. your story with people, whatever you feel comfortable sharing with, um, and wherever, mm -hmm. wherever you feel comfortable with, um, yeah. you know, you don't have to do the extent that Rachel is, you don't have to, you know, start a podcast. You don't have to, you know, just start these little conversations all over the place. And eventually mm -hmm. it's going to build. And we, I, I, I believe you, I think one day, and I hope one day very soon, we are going to have the change and we're going to have the mm -hmm. EpiPen. We're going to have something to inject ourselves. And yeah. we still lose lives to adrenal insufficiency. Yes, because it can change that quickly, but mm -hmm. we need to lose as few as possible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, the people that have died since I was aware of this condition is... It's just absolutely amazing. horrendous yeah. i can't it, believe it and and i think that if if they were to make um a documentary about this this whole world yeah people would be completely shocked you know I, I agree with you and it all becomes down to awareness people don't realize and all when we add up all these little 
things that are not little, but all these, you know, incidences that are happening that, you know, mm. they, it's just one here, a couple there. But when we put them all together and there's mm. such a common theme to them and that they can be yeah. prevented yeah. with awareness, it, I agree with you. Like it would just blow yeah. people's minds. I mean, it's just, I, I'm, I'm literally going to um, put Molly's story into a book um, from the very beginning because I can explain it better in a book. Like, I yep. mean, I you know, I don't stop talking, <laughs> but because I've got so much to say and, and just, just a, a year of her life would take up, I don't know how many chapters, you know, um, but the whole thing is just, it's, it's incredible how, it is ignored so much, even by a, one of the endocrinologists um, team said to me, oh, I think it was um, when Molly had a, her, um, she had to have uh, growth hormone injections. I think we were just talking about that and, and they were saying, well, endocrinology is, they call it the Cinderella department because it's just so ignored and so under well underfunded there's n there's not enough research there's not enough yeah. studies that, you know it, it is I mean people do try um and make things better but something's got to happen where we can all join together and you know stop being competitive and ridiculous the way the way right. some consultants go on about that they're, they're just arrogant they don't want anyone in their world you know some stupid mother like me in their world telling them what to do <laughs> it's just so stupid everyone needs to come together and we all need to sort it out because we can't no one no one should ever go through what we've been through no no ever. now so what can people do to come together you have your your facebook page you have images to share um are people still able to sign the petition? Is that still yeah, active? The petition, yeah, the petition so is still going on. Um, um, are you still are you planning a Molly's picnic in June? I don't know if I'm going to do a Molly's picnic this June, um, because it's all still quite Fresh. hard for me. Yep. Completely understandable. So probably, I probably will say you know it's going on, but I can't. Like I don't know. I find I find certain things quite yeah. difficult to yeah. to do. You know. Um, well, but when, definitely when when and if, when and if that you you do another Molly's picnic, make sure you let me know, mm -hmm. and um, we can do um, when the time is right. We could always do and let everyone know about it. And um, and yeah. but but of course, I think yeah. I think next. I think next year I will do a big yep. big molly's picnic yep. um and you know get it all back together again like it was yep. before and um hopefully yeah start everything rolling a bit better than i have it now because I i've been taking quite a while to get back in into yep. all this side of things because i just find it quite difficult well and i know um, this this podcast was a for one of the first steps for you and um, yeah. and we are you know planning on more episodes of Rachel sharing Molly's story and stuff and because it's it's so important and so so important for um the awareness for the learning for mm -hmm. all of us everything that we all need to be reminded of and of course it's also important for Rachel and her family for their healing process for their grieving process um but of course always at your own pace because it's it's just devastating what you're going through yeah I mean the main thing the main thing that I'm doing this for and I always have been doing this for is because nobody should lose yeah. anybody in that situation when it can be prevented so other things that you guys can do too listening um you know I'll post all the information in the show notes um that Rachel provides me for you know for for her her, her stuff you know, and like I said, just start opening conversations. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It seemed, you know, so minor, but you know, anything that we can show numbers, volumes, Rachel can show, you know, numbers that we know it's numbers in a petition. It's Facebook shares. It's, you know, when we can say, here's our voice, here's our people, here's our family that wants your help. That's when we're mm -hmm. going to get the change. That's when we're going to get 
Um, yeah. The difference that we need. That's when we're going to start saving lives. And that that is the superpower that we have yeah. is we are so lucky to have social media that we can connect, we can share, yeah. that we can have this family. And anything on my page can be downloaded and okay. shared and sent in letter form, if, whether it's a school letter, um, a letter to the local ambulance station, whatever it is, it's all there. It's all public. I publish everything. I have nothing. Nothing that I haven't published. <laughs> you know, I've got and I love that, that refusal letter. I love the idea of that. You know, you can always yeah. have be over prepared, have all these things. So if you need it, mm. you can be like, oh, you know, I, I have that, that refusal letter idea yeah. from Rachel. Mm. And, and you know what, I'm going to pull that out now and I'm going to use it. And, yeah. you know, it's about s- saving your own life and that might save yeah. your own life. And get yourself red flagged uh, with the ambulance station. Yeah. Everyone with this condition is a ca- category one and they should be red flagged at, okay. with the ambulance station. Um, and also if there's any, I've, there are so many stories and blogs that I've written on Molly's website. So it's Molly's, um, Molly's miracle.co.uk as everything on there. If you're going through a similar situation to, as we did, whether it's school, whether whatever frustration you're going through, I can probably bet you it will be on there. Um, you know, just, just so you don't feel alone with it because that one of the worst things is feeling alone with this thing. Well, and it sounds um, like, and if you have an experience, you, you very possibly would be the person who would know someone who's experienced that you could direct somebody in, yeah. in the direction that they need to go to get yeah. the help that they, that they need. So, yeah, um, definitely. so is there anything else that you would like to share with us today? I think um, just regarding the awareness thing, and the safety of everything. I think that if you haven't got an emergency injection, you need to go to your consultant yeah. and say, I need an emergency injection. And they must, they should give you one. They have to give yeah. you one. Um, and, not have, and, that re- have that refusal letter ready saying, I asked for an emergency injection kit and you were refusing yeah. to me. Exactly. And then, you no, know, that might be yeah. all you need yeah. to, to, to get yeah. something like that, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, check out check out the page. Um, I'll try and share some stuff today from previous years yeah. and stuff because some it goes back yeah. it goes back to two thousand and thirteen. So it's quite there's quite a lot on there. But yeah, definitely that that letter, um, other letters, um, other things that can help, printouts and whatever to help you fill out your your own your own needs, um, things like that um yeah I'll I'll share some of that later and then it will be all up at the top ready to look at yeah no that would be fabulous and you know what and if you're gonna Rachel's open to you sharing her content and stuff like that you know if you're in social media groups about adrenal insufficiency those are the best groups to share this stuff in because it starts that snowball effect of Mm. that that wave of likes happening and um all it takes is one person reading something and it, it might save a life you know and it's just mm. click and share so get them in these groups in your country wherever you're listening to um and mm. share them as you know as often and as frequently as you can our personal facebook pages you know can only reach so many people because it's just you know our limited but if we can get them into these bigger groups that's when our voice mm. really start to be heard um no that would be amazing and i will make sure all the information is there for everyone as well yeah cool all right. Well, Rachel, I cannot express my gratitude enough for not only for someone living with adrenal insufficiency, everything that you've done to fight. Like I just, you know, I appreciate it so much because I know you're fighting for my life too. And, mm-hmm. um, and I did, I I read some stuff like on Molly's Facebook page um, and stuff, her personal posts and you could read in her words how grateful she was she she knew how much you fought for her and everything Mm -hmm. that you did and you know and then sorry Uh, okay and then you know and then I also have the side of it from a mother like I just can't imagine my daughter we're pretty sure is developing adrenal insufficiency too and you know I have the fears of my own health and my own life but that's my life and you know if my daughter one day has adrenal insufficiency and she's on the same journey I am 
I know I'm going to be as scared as you and I'm just going to fight that much harder. And that's part of the reason why I'm fighting and doing everything that I can here. So um, we need everything. We need everything to happen. We need this EpiPen. That is the most important thing because that that could have saved Molly's life that day. And I I believe that it it would have. um, But it it was too late for Molly and I'd been fighting my hardest for 10 years. and, And hopefully now we'll get some breakthrough with with it and something will happen yes and i i truly believe we will and with time we are going to have more episodes with rachel when she's ready to share with us her molly and because molly is going to make a difference and continue to make a difference so thank you again rachel for your time and for your friendship and for being part of my family thank you for being part of mine (laughs) all right thank you and thank you so much for listening and letting Rachel come into your world and share her Molly with her. Um, Some things that you can do, make sure you check out her page, check out those links, share, subscribe, go to my, my website, chronically fit Canada. I have free adrenal crisis kits, advocate for yourself, get that injection kit. There's so many things that you can do because we do need to be reminded, unfortunately, living with adrenal insufficiency, we are living on that cliff's edge. And um, we need to be as prepared as possible. We need those safety harnesses on. We need hard hats on. We need pretty much everything that we need to do it. But I know as a family, we can do it together. So thank you again, Rachel. And until next time, please be well, my pickles.